yeah so yeah basically you know we be you know uh you still get the git bash you know because we still use it and uh, you know but the one i sent today you know i want you guys to you know um get that as well although you can run some of the command with your git bash as well mm -hmm. into like a linux this thing where the one i sent today it's uh ubuntu we allow you to use ubuntu like yeah. a light light version of ubuntu on your understand. yeah on your windows and you know you can run any command you can run you know any linux command any ubuntu base um um uh, distribution and repository you can do that like apps and other stuff to install your packages so yeah. um and that's why you know i sent that so that you guys will then i will be using that as well in this class and then so that probably you can follow along with all those commands that they um get used to that again you know some of them is not something you can know overnight you know you don't have to cram you don't have to put them on your head you know just maybe have it somewhere you know, some you'll be using it frequently, like CD, LS, you know, uh, PWD, you know, a lot of them copy, you know, move from one location to the other. You know, most, I think the most important one is how to navigate directories, you know, in uh, Linux. It's very, very important, which I will show a lot. This, this now, you know, how to move from one folder to the other, like, okay, you know, CD to this, you know, how to go back, you know, you are inside download folder now. How to how to go two step back and you know stuff like that. How to create a file, how to uh, how to delete a file, how to create a folder, a move you know other stuff. So we'll be working with that and because those are the ones you be we we'll be using. When we get to the AWS environment, we launch a server, a Linux based server. There's no clicking, no opening of file manually, no right clicking and stuff like that. To be one hundred percent. On the uh, on the terminal, so you know um, before we get to that this thing, maybe following week or so. So uh, that's why this class is uh, very important, and uh, we guys should try and see how. Yeah. So again, don't don't think it's too much and stuff. Just take it easy with time. You get used to love that. In some again, I still I still I will still have to Google that. Okay, how do you use some of this? You know, because there are so many. And uh, you know, once in a while, I still have to, especially the one I'm not used to. I don't use every time. Um, yeah. Um, let me share my screen so that we go over to the objective. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you guys see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is where to show the slideshow. Then there's a there's a shortcut to show. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Welcome, uh, welcome guys again. So today, um, today is the second day, uh, our second class for the week. So um, this these are what we uh, the agenda for today. We do a little bit of recap of what we did last week. You know, setting up AWS lab. We don't have to do the lab. And stuff. So uh, basically, we'll be doing more of Linux today. Introduction to Linux, why Linux, um, Linux basic commands, Linux distribution, share scripting, uh, basic networking. I didn't really had this actually. So because I noticed last week when we were talking about IP addresses and stuff like that, so I noticed some of us are not in too, you know, in that distance. So I will maybe next class I will create some. A few slides about IP addresses because it's very important. You know, we have to every time uh, you launch your server, you reference it with the IP address. You know, um, the public IP address. You know, understand the private. We're not going deep, deep into like subnetting and some of the uh, complicated one. But you know, it's also good to know. You know, good to know. You know, a lot of interview questions they will ask you many networking questions. You know, that okay. What do you understand by subnet? What do you understand by so it's something you can also take more look into that, you know, I'll be uh, next class, I think I'll be discussing more about that and port numbers, you know, understand what a port number is, you know, uh, the common port numbers, uh, you know, port number are just basically um, like, uh, they call it like layer seven, like what uh, allow you, they are, they are like specific number, like unique number that allow you to access specific application 
on your device, like IP address allow you to access a device, like your computer has a unique number IP address. It can be a private IP address. You know, most cases, you know, if you can navigate to your settings, you see your IP address 192.168. Whatever, whatever. So those are private IP address and they are very they are unique within your network. So when you public ones are the one you can access over the internet. So that's the difference. Then the port number, you know, for example, you have your server, you have IP address for your server uh, 32.8.5.3. So port numbers are the, the, on your server, for example, you have a lot of application running, just like your computer. You have maybe Zoom application, you have Skype, you have a lot of them running on your distance. So someone trying to access your server now, for example, they want to access your web server. Web server by default has a port 80, 80 by default, 80. So you have to allow that port to be open. If not, no one will be able to, you, you, the person must have your IP address and they must have the specific port number of the application running on your, on your server. You know, if you have 10 applications, each of them have to have different port number, you know, port 443, port 22. This SSH we are talking about is on port 22. You know, so before, if you, yeah, if you notice the last time we launched EC2 on AWS, you see that port 22 have to be open. If it's not open, you'll not be able to use the SSH. You'll not be able to connect with your server. So again, next week we talk more about IP, basic IP addressing and the uh, port number, because going forward, We'll be installing application on our server. You know, you want to access it maybe on the web or you know whatever. You need that port number. You see how we have to specify the port number before you can see the application. So those are, yeah, that's just side. So again, common AWS services. We talked about this last week. The compute services. This is what we just did last week, especially the C two part. You know, you see how it works. You know, I just wanted to show it that last week. So, you know, how it works, you know, what you can do with it. We'll be working more, you know, going forward from next week, we'll be installing application. We have EC2 that's running, you know, we have to install some application on it, you know, how you see some of the various configuration you can do on your EC2 and the other stuff. So but these are some of the basic AWS services that I introduced to us last week. And uh, um, yeah, so, we're not going to this, then this is the EC2 again. EC2 is just like the server on AWS. Um, Azure, they call it VM, uh, Azure VM or VM machine or whatever. Google Cloud, they call it another name. It's, you know, it's one of the most popular um, services on the cloud, you know, uh, on the server. So again, we talk about SSH, you know, which is a secure shell. And then, uh, you know, it's allow you to, uh, Make a secure connection to your server. You know, um, and that's when, talk, when we talk about the SSH clients. And uh, that's why I say you should download the, uh, what's it called, the Git bash. It's an example of SSH clients. Another one is the Putsi, which is used on Windows. So uh, on Mac, there's ITAM. You know, again, you can run some basic command on those um, Linux command on those. Uh, uh, SSH clients again. Clients is just an application, just like you download a Zoom on your on your um, laptop or anything. Any application you can pick up, they just application that allow you to um, connect securely with your server, with your remote server. Yeah, remote means like uh, something that's not physically connected with you. Like yeah, so your AWS it's a kind of is remote to you. So you have to like SSH into it to, to make the connection. So uh, that's just basic about SSH. Then today we'll be doing uh, Linux, uh, which is an operating system. Uh, you know, <clears throat> it's, a, it's an open source operating system and it's very popular in the server world. You know, again, as a, as a personal user, you know, uh, with your personal PC, you don't really need a Linux uh, computer, you know. I mean, you can play around with it, practice with it. I mean, you, personal, I remember back in school, LaTeX, David used to, you know, install Ubuntu on his laptop then, and uh, you know, um, play. I think he installed it on my computer then, but I didn't even know what that, how to go about it then, you know. 
but uh, you know you rarely see it on the well, on people's with on the personal computer so you know on uh, Linux. It's mostly uh, on the on the web server, web application, and you know most server actually. So um, so that's why you may not be too familiar with it. But it's very popular. It's open source, you know, and uh, just like your Windows server, you know, you have your computer. Your computer has an as a hardware, hardware, the CPU, memory, everything on top of it. That's where you install the operating system, like Windows or Linux. So you know. So in most of our cases, we always have Windows on top of our computer. So then on top of the uh, operating system, that's where you install various applications. So if you have Linux on your operating as your operating system, you have to install Linux application on them. And you know those are some of the uh, distance. So it's an operating system with you know a lot of distribution. You know which we also talk about some of the popular distribution. That's where you hear about Ubuntu, Sent OS, Red Hat, Enterprise, you know, a lot of them. There are so many of them. Um, so the kernel is the main component of the Linux uh, server. And they, you know, it stands between the um, the application and the and the CPU. This CPU um, and your devices, which are uh, basically the CPU, the memory, and the and the other components, other hardware com components. So the kernel is like the main uh, engine of Linux. They call it kernel. You know, it's kind of old, a lot of uh, some of the library and stuff like that. So on this kernel, that's where they install uh, all the Linux distribution like Ubuntu, like uh, you know, Red Hat, you know, various uh, type of uh, this thing. So, I mean, just theoretic, uh, just knowing that theoretically, you don't have to, you know, put so, Put that on your head or whatever. Just know Linux is the one that kind of connects the uh, device with the operating system itself. So, and um, it's like the central of the whole thing. So again, I talk about Linux distribution. There are so many. It's Linux distribution. They are they are the software itself that um, that um, allow Linux um, um, application to run on your device. So the distribution they are just like. Um, like they call it, they call them distros, you know, like they are, they are like various type of them, you know, pe different people, you know, working with Linux base, it will be Linux base, the kernel will be Linux, but you know, the distribution has, are different. And again, the, the way you interact with them are very similar. The, most of them are, you know, they are almost the same thing. Just some of the, some of the differences are the, especially with the package management, you know, for example, in like Ubuntu, you use apps, you use apps to like, you know, get some of the packages, you know, we, we're going to do some of those uh, this night, you see how apps um, package management works and stuff like that. Then on CentOS, I think they use a uh, YUM, you know, if you want to like install an application, you, you, you use like YUM install, YUM. I think I don't know what that stands for, but um, yeah, those are some of the slightly different distribution on Linux. You know, they are just kind of like types of them. You know, they, they are lots. They say they are around six hundred plus. You know, um, you know, various customization, different ways they work to be candid. I don't know too deep deep on Linux. You know, about uh, how they are differs and why people prefer one to the other. I know Ubuntu is very popular. CentOS. You know, uh, Red Hat too is very popular. Fed, Fedora, you know, Debian, th those are very popular ones that you know I've really, I've worked with at some point. So if you check your AWS when you are trying to launch EC2, you see all these options there. There's a lot of them. So they will ask you to select the one we use. I think the last class we did, we we selected Ubuntu to be running. So Ubuntu is very popular as well and very cool to use. So but these are just the, um, again, you don't really need to cram so many things here. They also are this thing. So again, why Linux, you know, okay, why can't we just be using our clicking, you know, our windows and stuff like that. Linux is open source. So open source means that the, the code, the source code is free, it's accessible to anyone, you know, you can contribute to it. If you are a developer, you know, you can access it, make contribution and, you know, uh, do various things with the source code. 
So they call it source code and, you know, which uh, most source code are also free, you know, to use. You can just download like Ubuntu, this thing. You don't need to pay for any um, any enterprise service like Windows. If you are using Windows uh, server, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty much expensive. So in terms of security, they always say Linux is very secure, you know, very secure. You know, imagine, you know, you hosting very, you have your very uh, sensitive website that's running, you know, security is very important. And, you know, in Windows, I think they have some vulnerabilities as well. You know, it's not compared to Linux, it's not as secure as Linux based operating system. So those are some of the reasons why it's prefer. It has a large community support. You know, once you hear open source, they always have, because it's open to everyone. Like for example, your Windows operating system, no, no one knows the source code except Microsoft. You know, you can't, they don't allow anybody to bet on um, Linux because it's open source, you know, you can access the code, you know, you can make contribution, although there will be some like organization managing it, you know, so that not random person can just put their code there. But, uh, you know, it's accessible to everyone, you know, the community is very large, you know, it's very large in the sense that a lot of people use it, you know, so you can easily get help, you know, if you are stuck, if you are trying to do some things and you are running into problem, you get help. That's what it means when the community is very, community support is very large. Then there's um, various linear distribution, which I just talked about. So you can use according to the requirements, you know, you can decide to go with Fedora, Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise, you know, Kali, Linux, they love them. So you can, depending on your, on your use case, you know, some are better for web application, some are better for other things, you know, so different, this thing, again, I'm not Linux expert, so I don't, so I just know that, you know, they use CentOS a lot, they use Ubuntu and all this stuff. And again, you don't really need to, unless you are, there's a job that's Linux administrator, you know, those are the ones you need to, you need to know so much about, you know, they are Linux administrator. There's a DevOps guy, you know, you are expected to know all these things, you know, basic Linux, as well as the command, you know. I've had so many interviews when I was there, they would just tell you, okay, how do you do this? How do you check the memory usage on your on your Linux computer? You know, that's what they, they always ask that, you know, a lot. How do you check the CPU utilization on your Linux? You know, yeah, they ask that, those questions a lot, you know. Because when you are when you have your Linux server, it's like maybe 50 applications, 20 applications running, you know, and maybe you your computer is getting slow and you know you're trying to say, okay, what is going on? Which application is taking, you know, on on Windows, you can just click, click, go to the this thing and just see. Uh, go to your maybe devices and just see all the all the devices and their memory space, or maybe just go to your uh, CPU utilization under I think device manager or uh, whatever on uh, Windows. So on Linux, you you use a command to do all those things. You know, there's no clicking. You just enter maybe top command. You know, you can enter ps command. You know, to show you the uh, all the application and what they are using. We tell you that this application you're using. 80% of your memory of your CPU, you know, you know that this, there's a problem with this application and you can shut it down, you can, you know, do many things. So those are some of the things you are just, you are expected to know in Linux. Then uh, it's very stable, you know, it doesn't crack, uh, freeze and then, you know, all those stuff. Then the privacy too, you know, no one is collecting your data, like, you know, all those, maybe Microsoft or Google, or whatever. Yeah, Linux is very huge and uh, you know, the community is big. You no, know, I know we are still, uh, most of us are very familiar to it. So Linux Terminal, I'm sure you guys will be seeing a lot of all these, you know, a lot, you'll be like, oh my God, what is, oh, what is this, you know? And then, uh, you know, trust me, they are nothing serious, you know, just a command, the way you interact with your Linux environment, the shell and everything, you know, the way you access your folder, just like you clicking on your, desktop folder, uh, you right click, create file, you know, same thing, you know, just that this one is on terminal, there's a command to do all those things. And uh, you know, this class will be going through, you know, all those, uh, especially the popular one, 
So again, these are just, you know, the terminal and the, it's the way you interact with Linux in most cases. Um, yeah, then. So uh, what is a shell? You know, a shell is a Unix term for an interface between a user and uh, the operating system. So a shell is the one that um, kind of make help you to interact with your uh, Linux environment, the operating system. Again, just like I said, you know, you try to see your folder, you're trying to see your application that you download on your computer, you know, you do that through shell. You know, shell is the name of the, uh, like the terminal they use in Windows, um, like a, so uh, a shell in an operating system takes input. So you have inputs, those are the things you type there. For example, you type LS, you know, you want to see the list of all the files and folders in your, in your directory or whatever, you know. So it takes input, it will process it and display the output to you. So, you know, you see the, the results, you know. Once you type something, you hit enter, you know, it's bring out results. You type um, um, delete file, you know, it will tell you, it will, it will show that the file is deleted. You know, if you, you know, it's uh, it just taking the command, you know, those are just the terminal. So these are the shell and the, the shell environment. So uh, some of the basic Linux command, you know, that are very, very, that are very important. You know, there's, again, there's a lot of them. And uh, these are just, you know, these are just because after this, you know, you still have to enter what they call parameter. You know, it's, uh, for example, you can say uh, LS, you know, in front of LS, you can see enter a lot of command. And those are the parameters, you know, you add with the main command. But these are the main command. For example, you can see ls dash l. So it, it will list it, it will give you the list of all the all your files and folder, but it will arrange it in a list way. You can say ls dash la. So it will list all the file you want, all the folder, every file, including hidden file. Yeah, hidden files in Linux. And again, we demo this, we show it, and you know, you see how everything works. So see this very, very important. Again, there are a lot of parameters you can add with CD, you know, arguments, sorry. Yeah, I think argument is a better, word, better term. There are a lot of arguments you can add with CD. For example, CD, you can say CD dot dot, you know. So CD dot, you know, just like um, um, current working directory, it will, it will just remain at that spot. If you now say CD dot dot, CD dot dot can just take you back. It will take you back like one folder up you know, again, I will show all this thing in a distance. It's not good to be, <laughs> we'll be talking, um, using math to say most of all this thing, you know, it's better you see how it works. So, but, you know, CD is very powerful. You can say CD, the name of the folder you want to go, you know, maybe you have a folder uh, inside another folder. So you can say CD, the name of that folder to take it there. So make directory is very common as well. You know, it allow you to put, uh, to create to create a folder, you know, directory is what they call folder in Linux, you know. So when you hear directory, don't be, don't run away like, what is this? You know, it's just a folder, you know, they, they call it directory in Linux uh, environment. So, you know, if you type MK, again, ignore all this cap to later, you know, it's uh, it's my computer that kind of auto call, auto arrange them, you know, every everything's lower case, you understand? It's lower case, you know, there yeah, are some cases you may have to put some arguments and capital letter, but you know, I think mostly, you know, it has to be. And Linux, I have to point this out, it's very case sensitive, very case sensitive, you know. Yeah, uh, I think you may paint me not too long. I think a few hours, you know, it was trying to do the uh, lab, the installation. So, you know, just using a capital letter in front of the username is trying to create, you know, it was just throwing error and, you know, those are some of the things that can really, you know, get you frustrated most time, you know. So he sent me the screenshot, I just saw it, I'm like, you know, just use lower, lower case, you know. It's very case sensitive, very case sensitive. For example, on your computer, if you have a file called folder and you, or maybe a folder you name like, okay, maybe Kenneth or just Kenneth, and you use capital K for that Kenneth, you know, and you go to your terminal, you're trying to get into that folder. 
you and you use small case. Linux will just throw you a that this file doesn't exist. So it's super, super case sensitive. So you have to watch that. And again, most of all these command are, you know, lower case, DCD, everything's lower case, MKDIR, you know, it just means make directory, make a folder. You want to create a folder, just like on your Windows computer, you right click, create a folder, you know, and name it. Same thing with this, you know, we're going to demo this thing. LS is very popular too. You know, you can you use it to list the contents of a folder, you know, um, for example, on your download folder now, you can type LS. So we tell you all the files, all the files, everything you download, not just file the folder, all the contents on your download, it will list everything for you. So that's the work of LS. You can say that, okay, this is what I'm looking for. So this is a remove directory. You want to delete a folder. RM is to delete a file. You know, again, there's a difference between file and folder. Okay, so I believe most of us should understand that, but uh, you know, let me just briefly, file is just like, okay, you have your test, your test, uh, you have a file is just um, like maybe you, you have a uh, file, it's like a subset of a folder. So your file will be inside the folder. So file is like the lowest uh, distance, for example, your test file, your test, you have a file on your computer called uh, something.txt. You know, you can't, you know, once you open it, you just see, you know, the content of the file. You know, file is just, uh, it's just a file. You know, I don't know how to describe it. It's a file, you know, your, your doc, doc, you know, all the doc, doc, doc that you have, you know, those are files and the file is like a Word document. Yeah, like your Word document, you know, like your PowerPoint, you know, yeah, all those stuff, those are your file. The directory are the folder. So most cases you have the file inside directory. So you have your file inside the folder, you know, just like the normal folder you have. So, you know, again, we, we show that and you see all the difference. So this RM is used for like to remove directory. Touch is used to create a file. I can say touch hello, touch hello.py. So it will create a file called lo.py. So echo is to print, you know, uh, du and df disk utilization. You want to check the memory of your disk. Uh, then df is uh, disk, um, uh, disk um, I don't know the f again. They, both of them are very similar, you know, to just check your disk usage and you know, what is taking your memory and stuff like that. Then this call too is very important. This, these are some of the, so call basically uh, allow you to get like the endpoint. Endpoint can be URL, can be IP address. You can say call www.google.com. It will give you the content of google.com, what is on that website, on that google.com. So that is what call do. So Veeam, I think we can have a class, a little class on Veeam. You know, maybe next week we talk more on Veeam because we'll be using this very well in the, during this class. So Veeam is like your, um, it's very popular. There's other one that's very popular with this, they call it nano editor. So they are just like a file editor on Linux. You know, Veeam and nano are very popular. So yeah, you know, you use it to edit file, to edit file, you know, to create content and do stuff, you know, it's very, it's very important, you know, we can, I think next class it will be part of uh, this thing, but Veeam, it's very strong. There's another one they call Nano, but I prefer, personally, I prefer Veeam. I use Veeam a lot, you know, in my distance. You know, a lot, some people prefer Nano Editor, you know, but uh, I'm more used to Veeam and the uh, Veeam is very cool. So yeah, I allow you to edit a file and, you know, do stuff on it. Just like example of that on Windows is Notepad. You know, your Notepad, you know, you can, you know, where you can just edit something and, you know, stuff like that. So in fact, if you configure your, if you go to your Windows terminal and you type notepad and you put a name of a file, you know, to take you to the notepad page where you can like make changes on your file, you can edit it, then you save it. So, you know, it's just a way to, again, you are working on a terminal, so you don't have access to the, to the main file and, you know, right click or maybe double click and open it and stuff. So we get, it's very important. It allow you to like download file, you know, we get, you know, it's uh, just like the name, you know, W get, 
to I, I call it we get but it's get so it allows you to like download content for example you know you go on uh, online you want to download maybe maybe just zoom.com or whatever you know you you remember there will be like a uh, button like a like a button you have to click that will say download so once you click it it will come it will start downloading to your computer so we get you can just type we get and put the url url is like your this thing uh, that you want to download the the uh, address of what you want to download like the website or the url you know so you can put w get the name of that url then enter then it will download you see it will download everything that is inside that particular endpoint so or website so you know so we get is very very powerful and very strong so grab two is another powerful this thing grab grep allow you to like um to like um extract certain uh, contents of a file for example maybe maybe like if you on my download uh, folder like this i have like maybe 100 different things there you know some things i downloaded some things i you know it's so much for example i'm looking for particular tests that say maybe kenneth that start with kenneth so you can use um, stuff like grep to like say, okay, grep this word. So grep will just bring you that particular test you are looking for. Instead of printing everything on the output, grep will just, you know, it will just give you the exact one you want. So instead of using like, okay, I can use LS. LS will list everything. Maybe I have 500 files and folders on my download. So I access it, you know, it's a lot. You know, but with GREP, you can say, okay, this is what I need. You know, I just need this, a word that says this. So to, to extract that to you is very, very powerful and very useful too in Linux and uh, this thing. So uh, GREP is there, then this is output that redirects, you know, uh, we show this to PWD is very useful too, you know, it show you, you know, again, you're on terminal, you don't know where you are, you don't know what is, you know, if you type PWD, it will show you your, they call it present work directory. It will show you that this is where you are. This is where you are, you know, like you are lost. You are in this folder, you are in back and forth. You are in different folder, you know. PWD will tell you that this is where you are. So you'll be like, oh, okay, I don't want to be here, you know, or maybe this is where I want to be. You can make that decision. Cut, you know, it's also, you know, again, most of them are very powerful. That's what I'm just saying using that word cards is also very, very important. You know, it's allow, it shows the contents of your file. You know, they use it for file. You don't use that for folder. Because for example, your file is like your Word document, your test file, you know, anything, you know, just a file. So inside that file, you have something there, right? You know, there's a content in that file. Maybe your resume, you know, it's a file sitting on your computer. So you now want to see what is inside that, you know, when you press ls you just see the name of your resume that okay this dot doc what is inside that you know how will you view the content of that file that's where you use cat you know you can say cat then the name of that file then it will print it will give you all the content of it then copy to you know to copy move pa pa is um they use it to um they use it to compress file you know, in Linux, just like your zip, your zip file to, you know, to compress and package file together. You know, you will be seeing some, some uh, file with dot tar. You know, it's uh, more like a, uh, like a comp compressor uh, tool. So, you know, they, it's very popular in Linux. I think zip is more popular in uh, Windows. So the tar is very popular in Linux. And, you know, again, in this class, we'll be seeing some file, we'll be downloading file, You'll be downloading some application over the internet. You'll be using this command to like tie it. You know, once you tie it, you have to untie it and you know, okay. Just like you zip, you have a zip file. You want to like open the package and see the content of the zip. So you can unzip that file. Same thing with tar. So you can untie a, a, a tar file. So it will just show you the content and everything. It's just for to like compress things together. Then change mode is, you know, it's used to uh, give permission on Linux. You know, every Linux always have a permission, you know, the user permission. Those are very a bit advanced for this class, so we'll not go too deep in that, you know, but again, it's used for, they have 
certain syntax the right uh, you can write like change mode 400 then the name of the file so it will give a read and write permission so there's read write there's execute permission so each of them has a specific number i think read and write read write so if you put like a seven seven zero zero that's like a full access to that particular file so to, that means as a user you'll be able to read write and execute the file so and again it's a little bit advanced we we use that a little bit in the in the in the in the class but you know it's something you just have to know change ownership to you know uh change own you know we we're very unlikely to use that much you know it's just to change uh ownership of a file you know once you create a file on the linux the file belongs to you as a user so if you want to give another uh give the ownership to another person you know that's when you use that it's not that this thing then ping it's you know just like you know ping you know ping like uh, you want to like check the connectivity of of like a website you can ping www.google.com for example if your website is not responding well your um application is not responding you can ping the website or you can ping the ip address that okay what is going on so you know if the ping is giving you it's supposed to return some outputs but you know you will know if you have a uh, if your server is down you know if your ping connection if you cannot ping your application for example if we use from ping the uh, google www.google.com we should be able to get a response back from the ping so but if you can't get a response back from the ping trust me google google is down you know at that point so it's it's one of the very uh, strong tools for troubleshooting to uh, find this thing then kill you know again when you are running your application you want to just like the name it you maybe one application is taking 98 percent of your cpu of your memory and you know you like you know you want to you want to just shut it down so you use kill command then pipe is also very powerful they use pipe to like uh, uh just like the name to get from uh, output from one command as input to the other command. We use pipe in this class with grep. You see how it works. So tail, add, you know, there are also some of the common and this thing that, you know, um, from my perspective, these are, you know, very um, common things, you know, common Linux uh, basic one that, you know, you should know, you know, again, you don't have to cram a lot of them with style, you start using them, you know, you will, again, you can always go to Google, you know, for anything that, okay, ah, Maybe you forgot how to how to copy a file. Just go to, okay. How do I copy a file from Linux? You know, you see a lot of suggestion. You know, different thing. You know, so it's uh, they, they are very very useful. You know, especially going forward that we'll be working one hundred percent on Linux environment. You know, it's uh, you know it's uh, they are very. I will send this to you guys too, so that you know you can you know make reference to it at some point or whatever. Again, it's um, there are a lot of documentation that you know that's uh, the basic distance. So you know um, that's the end of the talking. Talking today. Any question before we go to the lab part and see how things? Any question, guys? Hello. Any question? Excuse me, I have a question. Okay, sir. My question, is, my question is that uh, do we have to install that uh, uh, git bar before we can go into before we can start working on on the Ubuntu? Because I've installed the Ubuntu on my computer now, but I've not installed the git bar. Um. Yeah. I mean, if you if you have other this thing, we are not. We are not getting on AWS for now. We are not trying to SSH on AWS. Again, there are other alternatives to get bars like uh, Putty, like other stuff, you know. So, I mean, now we just want to play around with Linux command. It could be on anywhere, you know, anywhere you can just access a Linux operating system, you know, it's fine for now, you know. So far, we are not, we are not logging into our AWS uh, server. So when we are about to get into our AWS server, you know, we need the Git bash. Again, we can use the even other alternative to Git bash to uh, SSH into the Git bash has some advantages. Where when we get to Git, 
we learn more about Git, you know, you, you see um, Git Bash is very cool to, you know, connect to your AWS EC2. This night we are not really going into, uh, to connect our EC2 for now. You know, that's not the, so I don't think that's, um, that's necessary for this class. You can run, um, again, the instruction I sent you earlier, you can run your 100% your Ubuntu, Ubuntu, um, Ubuntu, and uh, Linux distribution, you know, command, you can do everything there, you know, and it will give you, yeah, you will, you will feel like you are in a Linux environment. So, you know, I mean, so on Git Bash, so you can run some few commands, but Git Bash is not like a deep distribution like, like that. So there are still some things you can be laid on Git Bash, like that call, you know, you can't do it there, you can't do some, run some, but it's very useful to SSH to our server. That's the main thing we we're going to use that for. So, okay. Yeah. So okay. So no no question. So everything is is easy. I know this command are very basic. So yeah. I think it's like that elementary that can help us a bit. We try to understand. Ah, uh, Ed, 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 this is your maybe your network or your audio. I don't know. And um, anyone oh. is hearing? I said, okay, maybe I will discuss that with you later. Maybe it's because I mean, I yeah, your audio is very yeah, it's very poor. Maybe it's your network or or your device. I don't know, but the audio is very yeah, it's very poor. The, so I'm about to um. So now we let's just jump on the demo and you know see how things work. You know, we're going to do a couple of things on Linux and the um. So, you know, I want to work, I, I use a Mac, so I want to work because I understand that most of us um, have a distant uh, Windows computer, right? So I think most of us have Windows, right? Windows yes. 10. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, mine is Mac though, so. Uh, who, who is Mac? It's a pro. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, if you if you are Mac directly, you can because Mac is built on Unix. You know they call it Unix. Yeah, yeah. And yeah you I can direct the terminal. On my yeah, exactly. So, you so when I when I downloaded the JIT the JIT badge, um, because I actually I, I, I I've, I've actually not used it before. So okay. when I downloaded it, uh, it directed me to install to install it on my terminal. So okay. after I downloaded it on my system, you know uh, I was asked. Uh, I used the, um, I got a video from uh, YouTube. So just okay. to type my uh, JIT on on the terminal. So when I typed it and it showed that, okay, everything I can install. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we get to Git, you know, we Git is very important thing we have to learn. That will be next week or so. So yeah, okay. yeah. and that's one of the things that Git Bash is good. Git Bash come with Git. So you can easily run Git command on it and stuff like that. Yeah, we get into Git maybe next week or so. Okay. So um yeah, but uh, again, as a Mac user, you can interact directly. You know, you can run most of all this command. You know, on a, on Mac, you know, everything will work. But on Windows, Windows use what they call um, um what, what do you call the Windows uh, this thing? You know, they use like uh, they call it PowerShell. You know, it's kind of different from uh, from Mac. So you can run most of this command on your window terminal directly. So, and uh, that's why, you know, we're, we're trying to, okay. So, can you, I'll, let me I'll, share. I'll, I'll suggest maybe if you, if maybe um, for those that want to, like outside the, um, that's for those who have windows outside the putting, maybe if they can also get uh, uh, this, uh, Oracle, Oracle VM. yeah, Oracle VM is cool. In fact, yeah. that's what I and have they, too. Yeah, so they can download the, the Linux. The Linux, yeah. uh, you can use it. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, Ubuntu yeah, to run on it. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm using to bet. Uh, you know, Oracle VM virtual box. It's uh, you know, it's heavyweight. You know, I don't know the yeah, capacity yeah, of that's... most of yeah most of the, um, the people. You know, you have to you have to session if you are using like four gig RAM. Good luck using all this stuff. You know, it will really impact your computer this thing. So yeah. this uh, this one that I sent earlier today, they call it uh, Linux. Um, they call it sub uh, Windows sub Linux computer, which is very cool too. You know, it will be like you have a distance, but it's more lightweight. You know, okay. it's lightweight. It's uh, you know, you can direct. It's very easy to use to install and everything. You know, compared to VM that you have to uh, first download the virtual box, put in the disk. You know, and you know, this doesn't take much of your space like that. You know, so that's why I'm trying to. Use, I send the instruction to them and, you know, again, I will share my screen. You know, you see how that works. I'm trying to, so that, you know, they can also be on the, so this is my Windows environment. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, yeah. So this is the Windows I have now. So uh, I did the installation earlier, which I sent the instruction to you guys. I think you should be able to see it. Yeah, if I search for Ubuntu, just type Ubuntu directly. On my this thing, no virtual bus, no nothing. You are using directly, you run it on your Windows. So it's kind of easier this way. And uh, you know, just the, the setup is very easy. So, and uh, you know, you don't have to download virtual box and be downloading um, images, Ubuntu image on your virtual box. And they, those take, if you have eight gig up, like six gig RAM and 16 gig, you know, you, you wouldn't have much problem with that. And again, we are not doing virtualization in this class. So, you know, it's more like cloud. We are focusing on cloud. So, yeah, so better, you know, with this, you have full access to Ubuntu. You can run apps, apps install, apps update. You know, you can run any Ubuntu base. This thing, you know, you will get, you know, 100% LS, you know, everything works perfectly with this. It's like, and you just have to type it here. You know, it's just a lightweight application running. So, um, you know, that's why I opted for this instead of going through the virtual box option. So this is very, this is not that common because I think it's not too, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit new compared to, you know, people use, uh, when I was learning Linux too, I use virtual box a lot there. You know, and again, I wouldn't want to go into that route for now. So yeah, this is our terminal now. I don't know how to expand this terminal. So the these are terminal guys. So you know, so let me. The what happened now is that you know, uh, I type ls now. We don't have anything there. So what I'm trying to do, this thing doesn't have uh, a direct connection with my computer. You know, unfortunately. So I will do. Uh, I will cd into mnt slash c. So now I'm inside uh, my main computer, like you know the roots. Um, I'm inside the root uh, this thing of my computer, so it's telling me. I so which one are we to... using now? Is is this a is this Git batch or what? No, no, this not, I sent the instruction for this earlier today. Yeah, just okay. take a look. It's uh, yeah, it's Ubuntu on this thing again. On oh, Git okay, batch, okay. On Git batch, you can run some of all this thing actually. Some of them, yeah. So you know okay. directly, yeah. So yeah, I send this instruction. Then you know if I go to user now. So again, I'm just doing, I just want to get into my main, my main folder now. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. My, as a user, my, I'm Kenneth. So, okay. This is my, um, okay. Let me do LS, that's L. Okay. So this, these are my directory, everything now, you know, you see, you can see from the top here, I have, um, Okay, thank you for posting that uh, bio. Yeah, so yeah, I send the this thing. It's very straightforward to install. So yeah, if you can see, you see desktop, forget about some of all these things. Some of them are just, you know, they are just, they are not really um, necessary. You know, main thing we are focusing on now, you know, if you go, if I go to like, okay, let me go to desktop, for example. So if I see this to desktop, so I'm um, inside this desktop, you are seeing light beside me now. 
if you can see on my left, you know, this is the desktop I'm right, I'm right. Let me clear this screen. I don't know how to make this thing bigger. Let me clear. And clear is very important, you know, if you are running too much, too much stock and it's getting messy, just use clear command. Yeah, just use clear command and uh, you know to to like clear everything. Let me see if I can make this. Uh, I'm trying to see how I can make this screen bigger. I don't know. Yeah, so clear command is very powerful. You know, once you want to clear your screen. So uh, now I'm Mr. Can you um, increase the size of that? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now. And again, I want you guys to see the other, to see my desktop. You understand so that you can let me let me just right click and see. I don't know. Not to um let me see property. Okay, let me put medium um, optional terminal. Okay. Um okay, let's go to font. Okay, let's just use 28. Okay, but on I think the color is cool. Okay, yeah. Can you see better now? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you see this uh to my left now, this is my desktop. I'm inside that desktop now. Okay. So you know, if I do ls, ls is to list. Okay, maybe I have you know, you see the stuff I have there, this folder, although this is an application, that's why it doesn't list it. So I have a this thing, then I don't know this desktop in it. So if you can see, it's listing this for that tool that I have here. So if I type ls.la, so ls.la kind of lists all your, we don't have any hidden file here. So, you know, this is not that relevant for now. So ls is very important and that's the use of ls to release the distance. So let me create a folder now. You know, I will write, I will type make directory. That's mkdir, then I'll call that folder too with lowercase f or for that one. I have for that two already. Just be watching the right, uh, the, the, my screen on the right, you know. If I hit enter now, you see a for that one pop up. So I created a for that one easily. It's the same thing I can just right click on my, on my desktop and say, okay, create for that one. But you know, you see how easy you, I just created the for that, for that, you know, just like that. So if I type ls again, you see that it will give me the name of the two folder I have now, you know, initially it's only show one. Now I have folder two, I have folder one. So I can create another folder. Another thing that is very important with Linux because you will run command, uh, you know, up and down arrow on your keyboard. I don't know if you guys on the, on the left side, you see up and down arrow. So when you are running command, you want to like run, instead of me typing, um, because sometimes you type a very long command and you want to type it again. So you don't have to type it on Linux again and copy and paste is not that, that powerful. So you use up and down arrow. If I use up arrow, it will show me all the, all the previous command I've run. So for example, I want to create another folder called folder tree. So instead of me, I can definitely type make dir folder three, right? Folder tree. I can do this. I can do this and just hit enter to create. But you know, example, for example, it's a very long command. And you know, again, we are, I say this thing, you have to be very, very lazy and you know, try to be, try to improvise a lot. So for that, I will just use up arrow. So I use up arrow to show me that this was the last one I enter. I press the up arrow again. It takes me to the, to the previous, the next two previous command. I, I can just edit it and remove this one and put three there. Enter and watch on the right. It will create a third folder called folder tree. Oh my God, this thing's slow. Yeah, so it will create it will create another folder called folder tree on the right. So you know it's um, yeah, it's very cool. You know, it's very useful, very useful. Once you start running videos command, you know, again I can press up arrow again. You know, and it will show me all. You see the clear that I entered the other time. It's still there. I'm just pressing up arrow on my keyboard now. You know, up, down arrow now, you know, maybe, you know, just go, come, you know, like that. You know, maybe I'm too lazy to type clear. 
I will just, because I've typed clear before, so I'll just press my up arrow until I get to clear again. I'll be like, okay, enter. So, you know, it's uh, it make you very flexible with your working. Again, another command which I mentioned was uh, PWD. For example, you don't know where you are in the distance, you know, PWD will show you your current working directory. So it's telling me that I'm inside user, I'm inside Kenet as a folder, then I'm inside desktop. So for example, uh, forget about the fact that it's written, uh, you know, in some cases you may not see, you may not see this, you know, in some cases you may not see this and you may not know you are in desktop location. You're trying to see that, okay, where am I? You know, I'm if sorry. you type that P- sorry, yeah. Then. Then the way I got lost is how you got into the desktop. Um, yeah. You first okay. Started, but the screen was not like. Okay. Uh, okay. I see the into that. Okay. This is where I got started. So okay. again, this is. Um, okay. Let me see the one space up. Let me see the another space up. You know. So I I was inside the. And you know this thing is also very very useful. You know. If you see the dot dot, it will okay, take you. It needs, needs to go back to the previous. Um, exactly, one okay. folder back. That's okay. what the CD will do. So okay. here, if I press LS, this is how I go to the desktop folder again. You know, if I press what, LS. What, what does that MLT slash C mean? That yeah, means... it's just like the mount, uh, mount uh, this thing. If I type DF slash H. So it's just like the mount folder. You know, this is it here. You know, it's telling me that my computer my C drive computer on my on my Windows computer, it's on this location. Okay. So basically, exactly. So I'm just trying to access it. So again, if I go all the way back, you know, this was where I was initially. Then okay. I had to CD into this guy. You know, I had to CD. CD is when you want to move to that directory, to that, uh, this is like a folder, you okay. know, but that's where my computer, my main computer, again, again, you know, you know, this one just, it's just running externally, kind of, you yeah. know. So, so it's very, it's very powerful. MNT class C. So it's very, yeah. So CD, you know, I use CD to get there. Then, you know, when I got to the to this, let me clear my screen. So you get okay. to see. If I use LS again, you always always use LS to know what you are doing, where you are, you know, what context you have at at any point. So if I use LS, you know, I see that okay. On your computer, if you notice on the C drive, you have different users. Yeah, 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 yeah. username. That's where your name is. You know, to connect, maybe your main, you know, you will see that everybody have user. Again, okay. if I use one thing I want you to know, this user now, this is where I want to go into. Forget all these things. These are just your some of your application running, you know, all of that file. The main thing where you see your this thing is the user. So okay. for example, now if I use CD, then I say users. You know, you say I use lowercase here, the user here is uppercase. Watch what will happen. Ah, it goes zero. Okay, is there, is there any other user? Hmm. This is strange. Then normally it's not supposed to go there. I think this, I don't know. Well, wow, this strange. But normally on Linux, they should throw you an error because I'm using lowercase here. Yeah, there should be another use. user because it's not supposed to go into that particular. Exactly, yeah. LX, yeah. L, LX and see what's inside this one. Yeah, just LX now and they show me I have Kenneth there too. Maybe it's another user there. I don't even see that. It's not there when I, let me see. Yeah, I'm surprised. I don't know, this thing doesn't work like it is. This thing, but normally, you know, don't do that, you know, use uppercase, you know, okay. users the same as it is written. So, you know, then you use LS, then I see the into Kenneth, you know, if you have a different user, this is me, you know, in your computer, it should be like this too. It should be your name that at this point. Another thing you should, that is very, very important, you know, tab, your tab, the tab button. I hope you guys understand what I mean by tab, the tab key, you know, it yeah, makes yeah, because, yeah. yeah, when you are running command, you just want short code. That's why I show you, how to like use up arrow to like, you know, see the previous command you run. Now I'm using up arrow, you know, it's showing me all the command I run. You know, maybe they, I want to make reference to this at this point, you know. So I keep pressing up arrow, down arrow, you know, it mm -hmm. will give you that this thing. So um, another very important thing you have to know is the, it's what they call, let me see, tab is used to complete, yeah, you know, to complete like a, like a sentence, you know, to complete like something you are, for example, now I want to see the into Kenneth. 
you know, it could be a very long name, you know. I see the, all I have to do here is just type K, then tab. It's completed wow. for me automatically. It's very, very useful, you know. You know, you guys will definitely, it's very useful. It makes things, I mean, I can type it one by one, Kenneth, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, with the K, you know, just K, it will bring this thing. But what happened is that if you have another K, you know, it will throw you a lot that, okay, you have multiple K here, you know, which one? Maybe, for example, I have uh, um, another name with Conley or this thing. If I type K and I type tab here, yeah, it will tell me that something is not, you know, something is not right and then, you know, that which, which one you want there, you know, but now I have single Kenneth. That's why, you know, it completes it for me. So in that case, if you have multiple this thing, you can just type K E and just like complete it a little bit before you press tab. So pressing tab, it will complete it for you. Then I'm right inside Kenneth. Again, I will list it and say, okay, what do I have? I have a desktop, I have a document, you know, and all those stuff. You know, let me clear my screen. It's getting messy. So let me list it again. So I have desktop, I have document download. So now I want to go inside desktop because this is desktop. I'm right inside desktop on the left. Again, CD, you know, CD is very powerful. You know, CD, all I have to do here, okay, let me just type D and try to complete it. You see what will happen? Because now I have desktop with D, I have download with D, I have document with D. So I will press tab now. So it doesn't work, okay. So you see, it gave me the list of all the D. So it's telling me that, okay, guy, which one you want? Like, which of the D are you talking about? So. Since I'm going to desktop, I can just use DE alone. Then I use my tab. It will complete it for me because this is the only D there, you know. So, you know, um, tab is very, very, you know. So I sit into desktop and again, I LS. Okay, what is inside my desktop? LS. So tell me I have um, folder two, folder one, folder three. So I have three folders on my desktop, you know. I can. Quick question, please. When you CD to the folder, can you also enter all the files or you can only enter of directory? No, yeah, yeah, I think it's the one, I don't know. Some of these are not really real file and folder like that, you know, I don't know. Some of them are just like, the main ones are all these documents, um, desktop document download and stuff like that. When we get, get to the real environment, it will not be, the format will not be as uh, like this, you know. Even me, this cookie, I mean, it's just a cookie. I think we should be able to see the into that if we want to see the into that. But anything that's a folder, which is a directory, that's where you can see the into, if it's a file. So now what I'm going to do, I will see the inside one of this folder, maybe folder one, okay? So let me press CD folder, because I have many folder, that's why I couldn't complete it. I have folder one, the same spelling, everything, and folder three. So let me see the into folder one like this. Okay, so now if I press PWD, it give me the, this is what they call path in Linux, P-A-T-H. So it give me the path to that, that okay, this is where you are. You are inside this folder, inside this folder, under this, under this, under. So it give you the full path with PWD. So they call it pre, uh, present work directory. I think some people call it print work direct, working directory also. I mean, it will just give you the full path. So I'm inside that folder one now. Again, let's ls and see, do we have anything in this folder? No, you see, nothing comes out in this folder, no content there. So let, we can create another folder inside the folder, you know, but let's create a file instead. That's where we use touch command, touch. Let's say file one dot, maybe doc, you know, it, it could be anything. It could be dot txt, you know, it could be dot py, maybe you want to, create a Python program, you know, it could be dot um, PPT, maybe PowerPoint, you know, it could be dot anything, you know, these are five, these are what they call five, you know, five doesn't have to end with dot actually, but uh, you know, these are file. And if you, if you use touch, you are creating a file. So if I press enter now, so let me do LS. We see our file here. So let's go to our desktop manually as, uh, as we, as we Sabi use our uh, computer. And let's just click this. So if you go to this folder one, let me click it and see if any file is there. I'm trying to open it now. 
I said, this is why I don't really like virtual box and stuff. You know, if I have the windows, this thing, I just, it's so much uh, lagging and stuff. So you see the file I just created now on the terminal, you know, touch file one, you know, we don't have anything there. You know, it says that we have a file now on our computer, you know, and I only, I just created it with this command, touch file one. So, you know, it's a very, again, let me see if, uh, if I say touch, let me use up arrow again because I'm always very lazy. Then I'll just change this to file two like this, enter. So I create another file now. So if I access it again, right here, you see the two files now, file one, file two. Yeah, you see the two files, file one, file two. So although they are empty file and that's why you can't see anything there. But again, we created a file. So, you know, so now I want to get out from this folder. You understand, you are inside for that one now. You want to get out, you want to go back to your, this thing, how do you do that? You do see the dot dot. Dot dot will take you, oh my God, this thing is so slow. You do see the dot dot. Dot dot will take you one folder back. You know, now we are inside folder one, okay? We want to go back to desktop, you understand? So if you do see the dot dot, watch what will happen. Hmm. I'm sorry for this uh, this slowness. Mm. I, I think I'm running too much and stuff here. So if I uh, uh then okay, yeah. So I do see the dot dot now. So it takes me back to my desktop. You see, I'm inside desktop now, and again I can run ls. It takes me this. I can see the back to the to the folder one again. You know, run ls. It give me this thing. Run ls slash l you know, it will list the, your file like this. If you run ls-l, you know, it will, it will give you in a list form instead of just printing it this way. So, you know, those are some of the uh, thing um, you should just kind of, uh, let me see. Let me show you how we can now create a file, you know, use Vim and all those stuff. So now we create a file in our distance. We have two files now, file one and file two. They don't have anything there. So how can we create, how can we write something inside our file? You have two options. You can say, okay, echo, echo is like to print in Linux. Um, hello world, it's like a print statement in Linux. Hello world, then you want to direct it to file one. Let, let's just direct it to file one. So now what you are saying is that, okay, this echo means print. So this is the, content of the file that we want to use. Again, I can show you other option where we can write a file directly. Then this means that, you know, the output of this, because again, before I even use this, this uh, output, let me just run this, echo hello world. You see what we print. You see, just print hello world for me on the terminal, you know, echo hello world. You know, it will print hello world for you. Now I want this content to be inside my file. And that's why you use this up arrow. Okay, no, okay. That's why you, you just have to append this, you know, to, okay, where do you want to write it to? File one, file one dot doc. You know, again, the spelling has to match everything. If not, you will, you will get a or something will happen. So, but, you know, now this command, what it will do, we write this content inside this file. You know, again, it's a, you are working on terminal. You can, if it's your Windows computer, you can open, a work document and just type whatever you want there. Here, we don't do that. I will show you other alternative using like Vim and stuff like that. So yeah, let's see what will happen if we hit enter. So we hit enter now, then let's check our file and see what is there. So the file is, let's go to our folder one. So um, we write the file inside this guy here, which is, let me see this a little bit. I'm uh, trying to make it a little bit bigger. But if you can see, we have two files here. So let's click on it and see what is there. Let's double click. I will show you how you can view it also. Oh God, we need to, do I even have a mess word there? Uh, uh, sorry guys. So yeah, I don't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have created, let me, let me use dot TST. So what this command will do is we create the file and it will write the content at the same time. Because I'm trying to access it now, it wants me to have a uh, Microsoft um, Office document before the file can be opened. So now you see the content of the file that I just created now. So hello world, 
you know, it printed, it's, you know, output the content. So the greater than sign is very, you know, very useful. They use it again, you know, this is what I do. You know, I say echo, echo is like print, you know, again, if you write echo alone, if you write echo alone, let me write comment C, oh, sure. can see. If you write, um, if you write echo alone, echo hello word, it will just print hello word, you know. If you write echo hello word DevOps or anything, you know, it will output it, anything you echo, it will output, let me clear my screen, I think I'm going to down. So anything I write, it will output it on the terminal. Now I'm outputting, I'm putting that output inside another file, you know, inside, let me say file four, dot tst you know so then it will and again remember i'm inside folder one so i'll go into my folder one on the left here folder one and then this is the new one i just created five four i will open it you see the content right there you know uh this is the content a low word develop the one i just printed now on the terminal so let's yeah. see another way we can do this so other questions so far, guys? Any question? No, again, don't don't take it to this thing. I'm just trying to show you. I, I'm not expecting you to go all this, you know, overnight. No way, no way. Mm. Even me, I, I do them. So, you know, take it easy, just review it. Play around with it. That's why I want you to have the environment. Play around with the one you can play around with. You know, make folder. You know, I think I will send some um, some practice to you guys. You know, make folder, create a folder, name it, rename it, and stuff like that. Another cool thing you can see here is let me go back. Let me go outside this folder. Okay, for example, now I have folder two, three. So I want to delete folder three. Let's see. Do I have anything on folder three? Let me ls folder three. Sorry, for that tree. Okay, for that tree is empty. Maybe I don't want for that tree, I want to remove it. So you use um, RM, DIR, it just mean remove directory. Then for that tree, I press tab, you know, because there are many folders there. So that's why I couldn't complete it. So I would type tree. So I want to remove for that tree now and also watch to your left on my computer this thing. You see for that tree will disappear. Uh, do you guys see that? Do you guys notice that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you want to clear, if you want to clear everything, what is the command? I don't think you you show the command. Yeah, there is a command. Um, remove. Um, um, let me see. To clear all the all the folder, right? Yeah. You can you can use something like this. Actually, let me see. Um. Okay. Yeah, you can use something like this. Okay. So this basically just means that, okay, um, I think you can use remove all. Let me see, RM, DIR, let me see, all. I don't know. Yeah, no search file, no, sorry. Uh, maybe flag all, or uh, invalid this thing. You know, another thing you can use or this thing, app, and see it will basically print all the things you can do. Um, I don't, I don't really, yeah, because it's not something I've actually used, but you know, if I actually need to remove all the folder, you know, it's something that's a bit risky. Yeah, you know, this, you to... this, this, is, this is what I was asking. Like, if you want to clear the whole command, you just write clear, right? Like, yeah, CLA, yeah, the, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, clear, Okay. Clear. I, think, I think I mentioned okay. that. Yeah, clear, clear. Yeah. I thought you were saying to just clear all the, no, all, no. The, all the content. Yeah, yeah clear. Uh, you know. I think control L also works. No. Okay, control L. Yeah. No. Control what? L. L. Yeah. How? Did you try it? Let's try that. Control L. Yeah. Yeah. On the terminal. Okay. Yeah, I think it works. Okay, control L. Yeah. Oh, okay, that works. Wow, interesting. Wow, I never knew okay. that. Yeah, you learn every day. Thank you, thank you, boss. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. I never used that to be candid, and I never see it. 
again, yeah. you know, there are so many things, you know, the uh, shortcut are kind of, there are a lot question. of shortcuts, yeah. yeah. Um, now you're in desktop. So if you want to, like you give a command, if I want to go back to like maybe tenants, if you want to move out of that um, desktop folder and go back to tenants. Yeah, that's cd dot dot, cd space dot oh. dot. Oh, there's so, a space, okay. Yeah, yeah, so cd space dot dot will take you one directory back. Make okay. sure there's space there. And okay. again, maybe you even want to do too much. You want to go to user all the way. You can say cd dot dot slash dot dot again. Oh, so okay. we take you all the way to this user. Let's do that and see. You see what we hand it. You see where we'll be back at now. Okay. You see we are back at folder. So it went to directory to folder back. So again, one thing you can do here, you don't have to even do CD one by one if you actually know the full place you are going. For example, we are going directly to folder one. See okay. what you are going to do here. CD, um, connect first, right? Then after that desktop with capital D, then after that, we're going to folder one. You can press it directly to take you there. Instead of going to connect, okay, instead of CD to, to connect, CD one. to desktop. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you know if you know it so and you have to be very sure if you miss anything, it will throw error. If All you right. like, you know, if the spelling is not on point. So, you know, I'm right on for that one now. And then, you know, these are all my stuff. So let's see something here that's interesting. Let's say we're trying to delete this for that one. Let's go back. You know, again, if you want to remove any file, let's remove file. It's just RM. You know, we have three files here. Let's say we want to remove file one. By one, let's put one dot doc. So I want to remove file one. Now I, I hit enter. So it, it remove file one. If I say ls dot slash l, so file one dot doc, you know, we remove file one dot doc. So it's gone now. You see, we only have file one dot txt, file two dot this. Let me remove file. So, you know, you can do that. You know, it's uh, you, that's how to remove a file. Let's now say we want to remove this folder one. You know, folder one has, is not empty. You know, the other time we removed uh, folder three, I think folder three was empty. So, you know, we're able to remove it with RM DIR, you know. So now if you have a this thing, let's try that with folder one and say folder one, you see what happened. You try and error that, okay. This failed to remove for that one directory not empty. So you can use this command to remove a folder that is not empty, folder that has the content, you know. So it's the basically, so to do that, you have to use rm plus rf, I think, rf, I think it's rf. So I use rm.rf, then it clear everything. My folder one is gone and it's gone for good. So I think um, rm slash rm is, the R, I don't know, but I think the F is for like force. So it will remove the folder with the content. I can't remember the uh, the main uh, full meaning of the RF, but you know, it means something, you know, um, that that's what you use to remove a folder with the content in it, you know. If the folder doesn't have the content, you can just use RM, DIR, it will work. So, you know, just for you to know that my distance is gone again, I still want to create a, another folder, make directory folder one again. So, you know, and I want to seed into that again. And then I want to touch a file. File one, file two, file three. Let me, let me use dot .txt, dot .txt to make it dot .txt that we can be able to uh, access our file.txt system. So if I use ls here now, we have three files created. Let me clear my screen. I think I'm going to down ls slash l. You know, we have the three files that is created. You know, all this one on the right just make permission. These are just the permission. So, you know, so we have the three file now. So another way you can like write to your file, which we will use very well in this class, is using the Vim. If I just type Vim now, you know, it will tell me, it will bring me to this place. I don't want to, let me just quit this. So Vim, you know, again, it's another, I think another class I'll cover that better. 
you know, because there are some centers you use with Vim. So, so if I say Vim, then I say phi one, phi one dot TST like this, you know, that means Vim is like editor, you know, we use. So I did this is the name of the file that I want to edit. I want to write something there. So let me hit enter and let's see what's happen. So it takes me to a terminal. I can type any jargons I want here. Okay, before you type jargons with Vim, before you type anything, you have to press I. I is for insert. You know, by default, when you get inside the Vim, you'll not be able to do anything. So before you can do anything, you type I. So let me see if my if my I typed already. Why can't I what's going on with this thing? This thing is really not working the way I want. So let me let me zoom again. And then hi. So I type I9 in sat mode. Let me type this thing. Hello guys. Hello guys, how are you? So you know, just typing random stuff, you know. We're going to do this a lot. So this is Vim, you know. Once you do that, it allows you to type it this thing. This we are inside our file, you know. This is our file. We are trying to write something there. You know, you can enter, go to the next line. Um, so you know, you can do a lot of things. So you know, a lot of things like Vim 2, you know, again, it takes, I think next class, but if you look at the bottom here, we are inside mode. So to get out, you press escape, column, W, Q, then on this, you know, that's, um, I think I can write that in the distance. So you type this to get out. So this one will write the file, it will quit it, then it will allow you to get out. So it will save it. So it's like save and exit. So if I hit it, it takes me out. If I want to see the content of my file, I forgot I've not really talked about cats. So this is the content of my file now, you know. So cards allow you to build the content of your file. You know, again, it's different from LS. LS is usually for folder. You know, when you are inside a folder, you just want to list. Then, you know, you are inside a file, like a test file, your resume. You know, maybe I have my resume here. I can just type cards, then the name of the resume to print everything on my resume for me. So that is what CAT is meant for CAT. It's, uh, so it's a very distinct, it's used to, you know, print the contents of your distance. So this is what I just typed now. It showed on the terminal that, uh, hello guys, how are you? I hope you are cool. If we go on the distance to use our normal method, go on the, this is um, for the one, and for one, uh, let's go, let's go here. Oh my God, what is this? Um, so guys, so let's go to the to the terminal terminal. Let me see. Okay, this is a little bit messy. If you guys are working directly on your Windows, it won't be like this. So if I use folder one like this, if I go inside folder one, this is the file that I just created with Vim. So let's open it and see what is there. So it tells me that you see the content of what I just typed now. Again, this is Notepad, which is which is just like that Vim. Again, I can enter a lot of things here. How are you again? You know, I can enter random things here. Vim is just like Notepad on your Windows. You know, as simple as that. You know, I can do this and just save it and get out. So, you know, save it and quit. So, if I go back to my terminal and cut it again, cut this file, you see what I just type again. You know, so cut is very, very, you know, strong and powerful. You know, it allow you to see the content of your, you know, again, you just see the file, you just see LS. You don't know what is inside file one. You don't know what is inside file two. You don't know what is inside file three. So, you know, LS, uh, CAT is what allow you to view all those things and, you know, make you, uh, you can edit. You know, VM, for example, I want to edit this file now. I can, I can do this. I can do VM go back to my beam and just like, okay, I, first thing you have to use I, if not, nothing will work. I is for insert, insert mode. So, you know, I can go to the last line and just delete this, maybe it's error. Then I press escape, uh, column, right, quit, then um, uh, exclamation on this thing, then enter. So it takes me out of it. Again, if I cut it, Again, using my upper row, I'm very lazy to type. I don't like typing. So I like to use all those shortcuts. So you guys should be too. So cut, if I cut this one now, you know, you see this, this one that I just edited with Beam, everything is gone. 
So, you know, Veeam is very powerful, you know, CAT is very cool, you know. Again, I'm inside folder one, I can go back again and go inside, what's the name of the, the second folder, folder two. So folder two doesn't have anything, you know. So you can do the same thing, create a file inside it again, you know, do a lot of things. Let's use a copy command, move command. So move command, they use it for two things, to move file, to move content from one location to the other. Also, you can use it to rename a file. For example, my folder two now, let me go out, go back to my desktop. My folder two, let me say, I want to rename it to folder, folder five. I want to rename it, okay? So what I will do is that I will say move, then the name of the folder, right? Then the name I want to change it to. Let me say, I want to say new folder, new folder like this. So watch what will happen. On the, if you see on my terminal here, you see uh, on the left here, you see it has replaced it. If I use LS again, you see, let me clear my screen. I think I'm going down. So if, you, if I use LS again, you see I have new folder. Folder two is gone. The other folder I use is gone, you know. So move is very powerful and uh, you know. Mm, okay, okay. It said uh, column WQ also works. Okay, without the exclamation. So yeah, this is what I used to, to edit by this thing, WQ uh, exclamation, the bio is saying this WQ will also work. So you can try that. And another one you can notice if you just write colon and the W and Q alone, it will not save your changes. You know, I can also do that. Again, I think I will have a short class on a VM and you know, auto, because we use it we have to use it to you edit some file, you make changes, and that's the only way you can do on Linux. You know, I'm just on Windows environment, and that's why we can be same on this desktop. You're not going to see anything. This is what you'll be working with, you know, real life, you know. So, yeah, you know, so move command MV is used to rename, and this thing, not just to rename, it can be used to move file from one location to the other. Let me say move. So the first one you write, once you use MV, the name of the file you want to move, then the destination will be the next one with the space. You know, Linux respects space a lot where necessary. So let's say I want to move this old folder, you know, to, to new folder. So that means I will, I will not, I only have one folder now because I'm moving it. Just like you drag in something from your computer. So, or maybe let me just use copy. Okay, let me move it. Let me move it. So what's what happened on the desktop is gone, right? For that one is gone on my desktop to the left. If, you, if you're looking at it, then if I open folder, let me ls new folder. You see folder one is inside. Again, for better clarity, let me double click on this on my left. Let's see the content. You see it has the folder there. So move, move it from the location and move it inside another folder. So that's move, just like you are dragging stuff. You know, if you are doing it on the desktop, you, you hold your mouse, you drag it, maybe you are moving it to another place. So let me show you briefly something about like dot. You know, I was using dot, dot the other time. Dot actually means, if I do see the dot, it means change to my current working, uh, my working folder. So, Dot means present where you are currently. If I do see the dot, watch what will happen. Nothing will happen. I see day where I did, you know. <laughs> so, so let's now do something interesting. So let me move the file, the one I just moved inside this. I want to move it back. So let me do um see, let me do move new folder, then the content of the new folder, let me see if this will work, then dots. Watch on your, on your left, the new, the, new, the new folder is back on my desktop. If I use LS now, it's back. And if I, use, if I check the content of my new folder, you see that it's empty. I move that folder back. So what I do here is that this command, this particular command, what I do is, I, I, this, uh, this thing, I don't, it's, um, is they call it um, a white white card, you know. It's just tell you that okay, all the content, anything inside this folder, 
anything inside this folder, move it. And this dot, again, like I said, it means that current, move it to where I am currently. You know, I'm inside my uh, desktop. If you guys don't remember, I'm inside my desktop folder. Oh, sorry. Uh, what did I do? So I'm inside my desktop folder. If I do PWD, I'm inside desktop. So when I ran this command, what I was saying is that move the content of this guy and move it to where I am currently. So, you know, your dot is very important. You want to do something and you are telling it to do it at your present location where you are. And that's why you see on the right, you move it back to, to the um, desktop folder. So again, it can be a little bit tricky, especially for start, you know, with time you play around with it. Again, move, uh, copy, do the opposite, you know, uh, not the opposite, of course. It will, you all know what real copy do. It will not remove the location. So for example, I want to copy folder one. I want to copy it inside the new folder. So it will retain both of them. It will not completely move it. Okay, okay. Yeah, copy recursive. Yeah, I have to use recursive. So it will, it will just copy it. This minus R, R means recursive. So what happened is that this folder one, there are some contents there. There are certain content there. So, you know, recursive means, you know, something repeating itself inside it. So it has a content, that's why you have to use this flag minus R. So it's copy this uh, folder one, copy it inside this. You know, of course, the folder one still remain where it is. So, you know, in case of move now, to move it completely, everything will be removed, you know, to just throw it there. So those are some of the difference you have to know. Again, if you go back to our folder one on the left here, you know, uh, new folder, you know, you can see this. And this is what we mean by parts. You see this, when I click on this on my, on my normal window, you see it's telling me the same thing that I'm inside C drive, user, Kenneth, desktop, you know, and this folder. The, the same thing with what you are seeing on the Linux terminal. So this is what we call PATH, PATH, P-A-T-H, or, you know, um, yeah. So which is very important. You have to understand the PATH. For example, I can, if I know the PATH I am, and CD, if you just press CD, it will take you all the way back to the home. Maybe I'm very, you see, all the way back. Just CD will take you all the way back. So again, if I want to go to where I was before, Maybe I can just copy this part. Can see. I can just, I don't know if I can copy this directly, but you know, I can just see D then. Okay, let me see if I can copy. I don't like to type all this thing. I'm trying to copy this. Let me see. So if you just copy this part now, I'll just say CD slash MNT slash C slash user. Again, I will use shortcut in large slash Kenneth slash desktop DE, then you know it will take me straight back to where I was. Then CD will take you all the way to your home directory. They call it home, home folder. So you know those are some of the this thing. There are still some that we can work with like okay let's let's just call you know call google.com you know google.com you know call we tell you that okay this is the content of Google. You know this is although this is HTML they call it HTML, um, this thing there. That's the... Yeah, control should be the, you know, the thing is with Linux, you know, most time you, it's, um, yeah, control should be, okay. Yeah, I don't, yeah, so, but, um, yeah, but, you know, just notice the, the copy command, the move command, you know, how they are different, the cut, you know, PWD, you know, the the output, the grep. I think we do some so many today that the call, the call is very important, you know, it will just print the, the output of the whole thing to you. We get, you know, we get we get is more like, you know, to give you the URL to download like a URL. For example, let me briefly go to my let me briefly go to my um to my desktop here. I just type, I just want to use the wget command. You say it was because we will be using it to download things on the, uh, uh, this my, and I have it gigram or, I don't like all this uh, cartel. I don't know, man. 
Yeah, that's why I don't really like virtual boss. I'm just trying to be on the same environment. You know, I will run it directly on my window, on my, on my distant terminal. So let's say uh, I want to say, okay, download. Um, uh, let me see. Let me just say WinZip. Um, zip. Zip seven. This is just a small distance. So let me say I just want to download this. You know, you see how we get to work. You know, I just want to copy the URL, then I will run wget. Now you see, because we'll be working with that. You know, when you want to install application on Linux, again, there's nothing to click. You won't have access to a website like this on the environment to download and click anything. You know, you can have access to, you know, just open it on your browser and the uh, you know, do stuff. So I will do this. I just want to, um, to like download this uh, particular this thing. No, sorry, I'm inside virtual board. That's why this thing is doing like this. Um, but for window user directly, you can run this Ubuntu uh, application lightweight. You know, and uh, you can do all the play around with all this thing. You know, create a file. You know delete, you know, move, you know, do things, copy from one location to the other. And then um, I just want to grab the endpoint of this, endpoint of this URL a little bit. Um, let me see, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So here now, if I, if I uh, right click and I do that copy link, because this is what you will use in you know, reward. This is how it works. Because once you click this link, normally if you click this, it's supposed to download that this thing to your to your computer straight up. But you know, want to see how you can do that. You know, if you go to some website, you can, how to download this. What you only see is the URL. They will just give you the link to this thing. So on Linux terminal, you know, the way you can do that is to run wget. Okay, yeah, so I was able to paste this now. W get, so you see this is a downloaded executable file exe. So if I click this now, it's supposed to download the content of this application I'm trying to get. Let me hit enter. What is going on? Wow. Hmm. Wow. Should be again. Let me click a mouse inside the book. Okay, so once you read this, let's hit enter. What is going on? Okay, yeah, so sorry, I think this, this is just hanging. So once I click that W get, you know, with this thing, you know, you can see it download the file. You can see how this thing was running and you know if i use ls now um, this is very frustrating so if i use ls now you see what i just downloaded it says when seven blah 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 you know then you can install it or do whatever you want to do with it but wget is used to download contents um from a url you must have the url which is the link to download then if you just run wget it will give it to you you know Another thing you can check is, you know, top command is very useful, you know, to tell you all the memory, uh, the CPU utilization, you know, and stuff like that. And the, um, all your processor, the CPU, the memory, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, um, you may not really know much of that. You can run each top as well. Each top is used, you know, it's almost the same thing, but more, more like fancy way of writing that, you know, it's telling me CPU utilization, the memory usage. I'm using 1.2 gig out of this, you know. Same thing you can view on your computer, you know, this swap or whatever, then you use uh, Q, you use Q to get out. I do not get it out of there. Now let me use Control C. Hmm. I don't know what is going on with this guy. Let me use Q. Okay, yeah, use Q to get out from other speed. Most things, if you are running something that's kind of this, they use Q or Control C to take you out of that uh, content. Uh, 
I think I've talked too much. I think we can stay. Yeah, next class we just do like summary of everything. You know, again, maybe I will give you guys some like uh, homework to, you know, on Linux. You know how to do all those things. You know, create. You know, especially navigating between directories is very important in Linux. You know, you want to you want to go to folder. You know, you want to go back dot dot. You know, you want to go all the way to home. You know. You want to go back, you know, you want to do stuff, you want to use up arrow, down arrow is very powerful, you know. You can, you know, do so many things. Yeah, it's very cool. And then you know, when you get used to it, most time I prefer to on my on my desk, I prefer to use the terminal to do some things, you know, like because it's it's fast, I can just create a folder, like you know, make DIR, you know, another one, another one. You know, it's a, immediately I have another folder on my desktop. You know, so you can you can it's very it's very powerful and uh, you know that's Linux. And once you see all those terminal, that's where you see there again a lot of command you can see online. You know, if you run into maybe you want to install an application, when we get there doing all those Jenkins, you know, you see you know it's command you do, you run this after that you run that you run this you know. You just have to run whatever they give you in most cases, but you know, in some time you have to like, you know, understand it and, you know, make different changes, do things, and, you know, find your way out of the hotel. So, yeah, guys. So I think that would be it for, let me get out of this virtual box. It's taken by, so in your, in your case, you don't need virtual box, just get that, this Ubuntu directly, you know, and uh, you know, it's because I'm using this thing, that's why I'm, uh, I'm using just to be on the same page with you guys. In your own case, just follow that instruction, the one I said, you know, it, it doesn't take um, all this memory you are seeing here, you know, you'll be able to, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to execute most of all this command directly without any um, issue. No. Any question, guys? I know there'll be a lot of questions. <laughs> Are you guys are sleeping? <laughs> yeah, sleeping on Lin in Linux class. No, no, we're here, sure. We're okay, here. Okay, cool. Any question, any suggestion, addition? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll just say I get to the um the whole concept and okay. just practice on some command expect some other material yeah 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 that little help again one one thing that helps in all this thing you know even if you go online you see all this command the main thing that helps is you know once you use it very well you know especially that's why some that i hardly use even me too i don't really know it off my head but you know all these things i see the other stuff that I use frequently, you know, it's part of me already, you know, it's like, you know, waking up and going to brush your teeth, like, you know, so okay. that's just the difference, you know, if you practice with it, you know, once you can sp get a Linux environment in any way, you know, those, you know, do all those things, create this thing, try to delete for that. Don't delete things then that when, you can. When I, uh, when I open that Ubuntu, you know, it asks me to sign in. Yeah, and yeah. To use that name, and that what was that you know, use that name? Yeah, for? when you are trying to okay, we didn't talk about sudo. Sudo, it's um, it's um, one of the this thing when you are trying to uh, work on Linux in like administrative um. Okay, I think assets. I think that's where my problem because I'm trying to I'm trying all the commands, but I can't. I'm not entering the desktop on my. Mm -hmm. Okay, my yeah, I can. Yeah, I can take a look later. Yeah, mm. you can take a look. Later. But what you have to remember that password and you know stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, I remember the password. Uh, yeah. So if you are doing sudo, especially there are some some things you do, like some installation you do. You know, it will give you, it will tell you straight that permission denied that you don't have permission. So m most cases you just have to enter sudo. So if you enter sudo, in some cases it will prompt you for a password. Sudo is like you know okay, admin okay, access. Now. I, I open my interface right now, Ubuntu, and it says to run the command as an administrator 
Mm -hmm. Is that repeat sudo command? Yes. Or C man sudo with for details. I don't need to do anything in that. Yeah, does it prompt you for like a password or anything? No. Mm. Yeah, we we'll take a look after the this thing. Maybe we can just do brief on uh, this thing. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, let's see. But yeah, but that password is especially when you are trying to access there are some things you can't really access directly as a distance, you have to use sudo. Sudo will give you advanced access, like administrator access. So and you use sudo to uh, to do that. So, I don't think uh, that I use the my own uh, username in my computer, and I use the password that I use to enter my computer for it. You can try that, maybe it will work. Oh, you mean me? Mm -hmm. No, I already, and what I'm saying is that I already created username and password. So when I was going along with the hands-on, yeah, I see that the desktop I'm entering is not the desktop on my, on my system. Like it's taking me to it. You understand what I'm Yes. Like, mm. like my desktop, you know, I have all the icons I have to my computer. Yeah, yeah. But when I created that folder, I mm. see it took me to um did did you see the into slash m t n m n t slash c slash user slash user then slash your name? Because you know, sometimes those things can have different name structure. Yeah, that's, you know, that desktop that, might be. Yeah, I think location. I think the name, the, yeah, exactly. The, yeah, yeah. The location, mean, of, the location of the desktop I enter is a different desktop. Entire. Yeah, exactly. It's a, yeah, it happens like that. That's why you have to be on the. Yeah, we take a look after the. Yeah, you you probably not in the user. Yeah, that's, in your that's own. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's my only issue. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the, yeah. That's you can just see the bag. You know, go inside. The one you the name your name the one with your username you know with your maybe a bio name like you see Kenneth on that name you know on that user in my own case I'm the only user in my computer maybe you have multiple okay, users yeah, I think maybe that's where my mistake exactly if you have multiple user multiple. you have to CD into the the uh, the right one definitely yeah but I'll I'll call and show you so you yeah, yeah no problem I know it's yeah, no problem. Yeah. 